I think I found our problem. Guys, we got Tater, the rotator, pulled in the shop. Robert's around here somewhere. He doesn't. R U N N O F T. Ryan, you know what that means? Run off. He doesn't run off. <laughs> so, we got mics on today. Hopefully, you can hear us better. We're going to get this thing fired up. And uh, we got some wood laid down here on the concrete. And we're going to pick it up a little bit. We're going to make a list of everything this truck needs and maybe start fixing a few things on it. But it's got a long list. It looks beautiful, but it needs some maintenance. So, that's what we're going to get into today. Lake, will you run upstairs? in the conference room there's a brand new four by eight whiteboard maybe you can start putting it together we're gonna be writing everything on the whiteboard so let's get this thing cheached up picked up and uh start playing with it engage the pto pto engaged Let's go back here and see if they can get these booms down. Stabilizers. Oh, I don't have to yell, we got mics on. Yes. Sorry folks, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There you have it guys, we're learning. So bear with us, there's gonna be lots of criticism, I already know it, but this thing is 100% off the ground. It's crazy, because that just goes to show you where all the weight is on this thing, because that outrigger is just past, or the front outriggers are just past the center section of the truck, and it picks the front up, no problem, because all the weight is back here, so pretty crazy. Now, we get this thing shut off, start going over it with the fine tooth comb. Whose idea was it to put this thing 10 feet in the air first? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I was wondering. <laughs> All right, one front tire off. Rob made it over here. <sighs> I guess Bruce is going to put me to work. Yeah, I got to get him dirty. <laughs> so I fear we'd start at the front of the truck and uh, make our way to the back because we noticed the brakes are a little spongy. I wonder if it's got drums on the back. I guess we'll find out, won't I was we? I wondering the same thing. Brake pads don't look that bad. You can definitely see where they got a little toasty a few times, but rotors are nice. That's something, I don't know if we should maybe find out what the specs are on them when they're new and then go from there. Biggest thing I want to check was like kingpins because of how much weight is on the front end. Right. You mentioned that it was like oh, yeah, at felt, capacity all the time. Yeah, that, well, that's what I was told. They said a big thing with these is making sure you got, I was told Michelin tires on the front because it bad for blowouts with this much weight. Don't seem like there's any. No, I mean, it don't seem like just from. So the truck's got 100,000 miles on it, which isn't a lot, but it's 100,000 miles that we need to call. We found that Rob found the previous owner. Maybe he probably knows the empty weight on it. Yeah, they've been super helpful too. Uh, so we're actually supposed to go visit with them and kind of go over the whole truck and. You know, you know the name know of their company? It. I knew you was going to do that. <laughs> so we do plan on going to visit them, but this thing is at like a minimum of 60,000 pounds, probably more than that, 65,000 pounds all the time. So engine's got like right around 4,000 hours on it, 4,800 I think is what it was. So we do have like a coolant smell. But before we get into the engine and stuff, we're going to work our way around the chassis. But so far, I mean, I don't really see anything worn yeah, out. Yeah, so I did notice when I left the house, I did have to put some coolant in it. So okay. I don't know if it's topped off when you guys picked it up or not. We actually topped it off, I think. So it's either using it or losing it. Yeah. yeah I just got to figure that out. And maybe losing it because the turbo is making like the vein, the the uh, VGT parts, like yee, yee, making yeah. a, a noise too. But I think if we pull maybe this upper EGR pipe, we'll wait for the engine to cool down. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do everything else first. But Lake's almost got our whiteboard put together. <laughs> we, would, we would be the ones to order one that's like a 100-piece puzzle. <laughs> So front looks good. We definitely want to replace the hub oil in the front end. Maybe put some, since we're wanting to spruce this thing up, make it look nice. We'll probably get these hubs all cleaned up, paint them, put some like nice uh, chrome hub covers like we got on the front of the Trader Taxi and everything else. Definitely a bumper. Got to have a nice looking bumper, dude. All right, well, let's go to the back. See what we got back here. They should. Well, I said should. 
maybe there's something. I've never seen a cover like that. I wonder if you got to screw that off. We have dirt pliers. Rear wheels are off. And pads are starting to... The inside one, or the outside pads are looking a little... They don't look as bad as I thought it would, honestly. I think we're just... I think it's just a heavy so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it is so heavy. Hmm. Airbags don't look bad either. Well, that answers a lot of questions. The other thing I do want to point out is like the tire wear is like, Ooh. yeah, this tire's junk. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Look at this tire. That is really weird wear pattern. Probably from the turning and stuff, it's just pissed it off. Yeah. Well, we're putting tires on the list, it looks like. Thank you. I can almost sit on a regular chair underneath this thing. <laughs> Checking U joints and stuff. Yeah, I was just curious about the U joints with this thing being heavy that it is. I probably need to pull it out. I think the big thing we got to fix is the clutch. Definitely. I know when I drove it, it was terrible. It was right on top. And we might be able to adjust it. We can look at that here in a minute. It's but, got like, I mean, like a quarter inch of free play, which is better than nothing. Yeah. But. It won't hold anything though. We might be able to pull the cover off there and inspect it. If we do that. Yeah, so we probably have to put a clutch in it. Yeah, oil cooler line, a little wet there. Probably should be tightened up. <laughs> They've definitely been greasing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess there ain't much you can really see. Other than a lot of clutch dust. Yeah, I was wondering if this was like a self-adjusting clutch or this was one we could get a little bit of play and it's looking like self-adjusting. Oh, it definitely needs track bars. They're shot. So the track bars for the rear ends that hold the rear ends like centered in the frame are shot. You can see like the bushings right here coming out of them. And that. There's, I mean, there's a ton of force on those things with this thing going side to side, especially this front axle because it's always being like manipulated because the front and the rear are like the pivoting points. And this one's like just kind of in the middle and in the way. Something else when you look at it, like these bushings right here for these springs, like these all, those look okay. They don't look too bad. But definitely this track bar. Track bars wouldn't hurt to get replaced, and they're not too bad to get to. So pretty much in the rear of the truck, we need to address changing all the rear axle fluids, that cross track bar thing. Rob pointed out that the engine definitely needs to be serviced. This gearbox, I mean, they definitely kept up on greasing, but it hasn't been greased in a while because there's lots of buildup from where things have been greased, but Maybe they haven't been greased. Maybe the last operator that ran it didn't grease it as much as he should have. There's no, no, no telling until we meet the company that used to own the truck. So, so this thing is losing coolant somewhere. Hopefully it's not losing it between the block and the head. EGRs are a pretty common problem on these. So we're gonna pop this pipe right here because the way the exhaust gas flows, it goes through the exhaust manifold, out the front over here, through the EGR cooler, which uses coolant to cool down the exhaust gas. And it makes a big old U-turn right here has an exhaust EGR valve, which is usually closed until it wants the gas to flow back into the engine. It flows through there, up and over, and back into the intake. So we're gonna catch it right here at the back of the EGR, and if there's any liquid in there at all, we know the EGR is leaking. So pull this apart. It's a little spicy. Do I need to find us a pan? No, there won't be any coolant come out. I think on the Tratter Taxi, this thing's actually leaking. We gotta address that too. That's hot. <laughs> There's our interesting part of the video. <laughs> maybe someone can comment down below and help us maybe diagnose where the coolant's going because if we can't find anything right here and it's not visibly leaking anywhere, this could be a problem. 
I think I found our problem. It's wet. That's not good, Ryan. So we'll pull this pipe the rest of the way off right quick because we're gonna have to replace that EGR cooler, which means turbo's gotta come off. <laughs> I don't know if it can be slid out the back. I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> there we go. Yep, see how it's wet in there? Taste it. It tastes like coolant. <laughs> Is it a little salty? The sour? <laughs> so, that's good. I mean, it's not good. But it means that EGR is the problem, and it's not a head gasket problem or something like that. So, it's bad, but it could have been way more bad. See that right there? You know how you know it's coolant? If it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, inside here, it's going to be wet, yeah. All right, well, late got our whiteboard put together. Let's go write EGR cooler on the whiteboard. Problems? <laughs> you should have been a teacher. You got great whiteboard handwriting. I can't, I can't write <laughs> flat like this on the wall. EGR cooler. E. Tires, it needs all the rear tires. Rear. <laughs> Using I hope my rod looks better on camera. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have no room for everything else we need. <laughs> all right, go smaller. Now you can leave it on there, it's fine. I'm just messing with you. I have one job. If we got more problems than I can fit on the board. It's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have that many problems, hopefully. I do, would like to find this air leak, though. All right, we're going to break for lunch. It is like 1 o'clock here. Go grab some lunch, come back. We'll find the air leak on this thing. We're going to go check out on the same video the Miller. It's a Miller DTU, right, I think we got out there. We're going to yep. end up rebuilding like, all the cylinders on it. So we need to get like the model and serial number off of it, and uh, maybe you guys can let us know what to check on that because it's how old do you think that thing is? Uh, probably eight nine years old. So we got a lot to uh, get to working on that. So let's go get some lunch. Well, guys, we got done eating lunch. Uh, Rob had something he had to go handle, something really big, and it'll be maybe in a video over the next couple of days. We shall see. It might be in this video. I don't know yet. Depends on what we get done today. So, I just busted my rear on the scooter. <laughs> Wipe out. <laughs> Hard too, though. Yeah, it did not feel good. Um, I've decided to hold off on pulling the turbo until we get my laptop up here and diagnose there's a code. I think there may be something going on with the actuator in here because the turbo is like, like uh, the veins, you can hear them like open and closing, open and closing. Like, I and mean, they shouldn't be while it's like sitting there idling. So, there might be something going on there. But let's go to the whiteboard because I wrote a bunch of stuff on the whiteboard over here. So, definitely needs an EGR cooler. Definitely needs rear tires. You guys saw that. Got to figure out the check engine light. Possibly a turbo. We hope not because those are not freaking cheap. Definitely need to do differential oil in the rear ends, hub oil, clutch for sure. Possibly the trans track bar on the rear axles you guys seen where the bushings were blown out of there the cab shocks steering wheel bushings i didn't I never really showed them that so let's show you that real quick so on the steering wheel here see how the steering wheel like moves like that that's somewhere like someone was climbing up in here and like pulling on the steering wheel to get in it all the time so maybe maybe we can take the covers off this right quick and see what that entails to uh if it's like something we can replace pretty easily or what's wrong with it. Sir, back to the whiteboard. No, we're going to go get some tools. Well, I got this thing coming apart here, but I ain't wanting to snap apart. There's probably like some little snaps inside, but maybe I can get it to come around it. Hmm. The bolt was stuck in there, that's what it was. There it is. All right, so, oh, it's like the whole assembly is like, I guess it really isn't like that bad, but it's bugging me, you know? Where'd the screwdriver, Where'd the screwdriver go? 
There's like another lower cover right here. Maybe I can take it off. I guess it ain't that bad. I just don't. Stuff like this bothers me. So, I guess I'll have to do some research and maybe someone comment down below if I'm just overreacting about how the bushings are like a little loose or if it's something that maybe we should address. Steering wheel bushings, alignment, we're definitely gonna do an alignment on it just to double check it. I don't think it's really out. The new front tires are pretty dang new. Maybe we can try to find a date code on these things. Let's see. I don't see anything. Sometimes like the date codes are in like the weirdest spots on these tires. I see a 2012, but this tire, the truck ain't that old. So that's not right, that's for sure. I don't know. They can't be that old, but we're supposed to meet up and go to the old owner's shop, and I'm sure he's probably the one that put these front tires on it. So maybe we can ask him. We need to find out about how old the front tires are. <sighs> Lift axle doesn't work. Let's try to figure that out right quick. Because right here's the valve, but nothing happens and nothing works. So maybe uh, let's check fuses. Maybe on the fuse panel here. It'll say something about that lift axle. All right, guys, so the fuse is good inside. It's a three amp on number 11 lift axle, three amp inside the fuse box, and it's good. So the only thing I can think of is maybe this switch is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, which it goes to right here. Let's see if there's power in here. There's no power right here at all. And what makes me a little sus of all this is inside this door pocket here, there's a new switch with plugs. So did this maybe used to go there or what? I don't know. All right, I've got my power probe here. We'll see if we can uh, figure out why these plugs are not working, why there's no lift axle lifting. I hate to back probe something and pop something, but I don't know. It doesn't make sense, like there's a disconnect somewhere or what, because you think up would be up and then down would be to lower, but there's no valves, no nothing clicking anywhere, even when it has like air in the system. And I don't see any switches on the dash that would tell it to do something. I don't know. That suspension dump, winch brake. I don't know. Lights, those lights. Yeah, I know. There's like no other switches anywhere other than PTO switch there. Nothing. I don't know. Comment down below, guys. We need all of your input on this thing. <laughs> Has anyone ever had a truck that doesn't have a doesn't like putting the uh, lift axle down? We gotta figure it out. So. Lift axle, still inoperative. We need new air hoses, we'll go talk about that. Something really big, big question for folks here. We gotta do some research on this, is do we have to have this thing certified being in, it being registered in the state of Tennessee? Some people said these have to be certified yearly. Some people said that they can only be certified for so many years. I don't know, and some paint repair. So let's go look at the airlines in your place and a couple paint spots. I don't know where we could take it to to get that fixed. You don't have any paint shops, Ryan? Uh, no, I didn't think so. Definitely not. No, I don't have any paint shops, dude. Nowhere. I don't even know. Rob did get the remote working. He said there's like a sequence to get it to activate and turn on. I have to figure that out still. But, uh, yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, right. See, like right here where there's like paint starting to chip. It's like body filler in there, there too. Long. Yeah, I know. But see, like. Oh, dude. Kind of it's all gonna come out whenever we get the body work done. But it's like, it would either do like body work to fill that gap or maybe there was a repair done right there before. I'm not sure. So that's gonna have to have some attention, obviously. Uh, over here on this side, there was a spot. Where did we see? It was on the side. Up towards the front? Right there. Right there, yeah. It looks like someone got up against something and scratched it. 
We can't have no good looking truck out here on the road, dude. It's gonna gotta be fresh. Can't have any issues. We can't have a truck that doesn't look good looking, all right? These airlines. Oh, that looks healthy. Looking cracked. So that needs some attention. Uh, but yeah, the big question is like, does this thing have to be certified? Like how often do the cables need to be checked? This is part of us like going to wrecker school and figuring all this out too, I reckon. So up here on top of the wrecker, there is the oil tank and underneath, underneath this cover right here is a screen, which we need to check the filter in. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a hold of Miller and ask them what the deal is with that. But up here, definitely need to check on the filters for the oil system and make sure they're in good shape. This thing's a real deal, dude. And there used to be something mounted right here on top. So gotta figure that out. What may have been mounted up here at one point in his life. So on our list here, We've got to put a new visor on this thing because look at the visor. That is as factory as factory comes on that there visor. It's all right from the factory, but it ain't part of the cool crowd here. Glass, I don't know why I put lifts. Maybe glass lights, glass lens lights from our friends over at Four State. More safety lights. The rotating beacons up there, they're a little outdated. I think we might could find someone to hook us up or point us in the right direction with some nice pretty LED lights not pretty cool LED lights cab panels we need cab panels right here on the bottom boom to go right across the bottom down there to hide all this ugliness and then maybe we can relocate the lift axle uh, I wonder if this pressure has something to do with it it's kind of weird there's no pressure gauge on there so that needs some attention definitely needs new seats watch out cameraman geez these seats are factory, outdated, blown out. Gotta get some new seats. Needs a new steering wheel. Gotta have, so we gotta get this thing functional. That, this right here, this is the functional list. Getting it fully functional, 100%. This is the what Bruce wants list on the make the tow truck look cool. Because you gotta have a cool looking tow truck. So new steering wheel, the CB radio in there doesn't work. I actually have a CB radio floating around here somewhere that is ready to go that we need to uh, see about putting a new CB radio. The XM radio, getting it working. Chrome hub oil caps to go on there. Some LED headlights replace the factory halogens. Some newer cover, newer looking stacks, lug nut covers, and a bumper. I think it's all pretty standard stuff. Get rid of these plastic caps down here, put some nice pretty chrome ones on there. Um, Freaking Bray, right around the electric forklift. So right here are the cab panels, as mentioned, like something like this to go along the bottom of the cab, like we have on the Treader Taxi here, but on this unit. As we made it down here in the other lot, and this is what's called a DTU, it's a Miller detachable towing unit that we plan on putting on Brutus, but it's got a few issues. You can see right down here that this cylinder has got some oil leakage going on. We are not afraid to rebuild cylinders. We've done plenty of those on farm equipment, tractors and stuff. Um, the only problem that the guys mentioned that they had a hard time getting this on and off the truck um, whenever they had to remove it to do anything is kind of just a huge pain. These are not made to come on and off like every day, but they're made to come on and off if you had to, you know, within a little bit of reason not being the most difficult thing to do. But I'm sitting here looking at it. This lift is not in the worst shape, but it needs some work. You know, there's a little bit of rust here and there. We may have to just clean up and make it look nice again, but I don't think it's too far off for us to make it a really cool project to uh, put behind Brutus. Looks like it's loaded down with like all the tools. So this is what we plan on putting on Brutus. It'll look just like this once it's on the truck right there. Pretty simple setup, don't you agree? Yep. Not much to it. So these are Miller detachable towing units. Let's go look at a, there's a Zack lift sitting over here on another truck. Let's go check that out. So this right here is a Zack lift. This one's built a little bit differently. It's got this ginormous cylinder in there that moves this whole entire system out to pick anything up and drop it down. It doesn't have like the great big boom that comes up. So this is a little bit different style of lift, but this one I feel like 
maybe it doesn't go on and off the truck as easily, but it connects a little bit different. It doesn't have that great big long frame, but also it, it operates quite a bit different. So whether we rebuild that one or we get it that one fixed up and sell it because it's not being used um, and end up putting a newer Zach lift on here, because some of the other folks in the Fitzgerald family are Fitzgerald Wrecker sales, which we'll probably go visit them sometime very soon and see all the wreckers that they're building. And uh, they said they had a brand new Zach lift there they might make us a sweet deal on. So who knows? But let's get back up to the shop. We've got a lot of stuff unpacked. My brother made it here with Brutus. We got to get the step deck. We got to find a home for the step deck here out of the way. Maybe we go ride around and find that. And go get the golf cart. You want to ride these around? Mine's about dead. All right, let's go get the golf cart. So we got a lot of stuff moved up here recently with Aaron brought the old black Dodge. I sent it to a friend of mine's house. He got it kind of running and driving. Still has a few quirks. I think it needs to be retuned possibly or something, but it's here. We're either going to paint it and get it 110% or I may sell it. So if anyone's interested in this thing, I'd let it rip for like, what, you're interested in it? Yes. That If you bought it, then I would have to buy it. Ryan's interested in it, but then I would still have to work on it. I don't want to work on it. So if anyone wants to buy it as it sits, 22 grand, 2,009, 198,000 miles, you may say that's a lot of money, but this is the, the money part right here. This is a D&J Street Fighter engine with literally two, three miles on it. This is a $20,000 engine by itself. It's got 85% over injectors, 10 mil pump, brand new steed speed manifold, brand new turbo. It's got everything. It's got a Suncoast 68RF Junior Trans, brand new tires on it. it. Just needs paint and some headlights and a grill, and it's easily a thirty thousand dollar plus truck, easily with the paint job and stuff. I just don't have the time with us getting the record business going and moving to Tennessee and having everything else we have going on. It's just going to be a lot to uh, balance. So we we'll eventually get her fixed up. Batteries are dead. We're going to leave it charging overnight. Be back up here tomorrow, tinkering around. Got a lot of stuff to finish unpacking. A lot of stuff to throw away, get rid of. But comment down below, guys, if you have any insight on the tow truck on the things I asked during the video, make sure you smash that like button, comment, of course, subscribe if you're new. And uh, we'll be headed down to Florida to pick up our brand new Globe RGN heavy haul trailer in the next couple days, guys. See you later. Peace.